Hi, welcome back. In the previous lecture, I explained you how bilirubin is formed from the breakdown of heme within the spleen macrophages. The bilirubin that is formed is unconjugated bilirubin. It is highly toxic and lipid soluble or water insoluble. So now in this lecture, I will be explaining you how this unconjugated highly toxic bilirubin is handled by the liver cells to detoxify the bilirubin and how it is excreted from our body. See this is the spleen and within the spleen is the macrophage and within the macrophage unconjugated bilirubin is synthesized from the heme and this unconjugated bilirubin is let into the circulation. So this unconjugated bilirubin in the circulation, it binds to a plasma protein, albumin and this unconjugated bilirubin is plasma protein bound. So that means that is not excreted through urine. So this plasma protein bound unconjugated bilirubin starts circulating. So through the portal venous system, it can enter the liver and it can reach the liver sinuses. The capillaries within the liver is the liver sinuses and this liver sinuses are lined by a single layer of endothelial cells and they are porous, fenestrated. Now within the liver, so this is the albumin which is a carrier and this is the yellow color bilirubin. So these two complex reaches the liver. The hepatocytes, liver cells will pick up the bilirubin. This bilirubin is internalized. We call it as uptake of bilirubin by the hepatocytes. So this can be uh, either a simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion process through a transporters present in the membrane, cell membrane transporter. So there can be an integral protein transporter. This we call it as BT, bilirubin transporter. So with the help of a bilirubin transporter or a carrier protein, the bilirubin is uptaken into the liver cells. Now this bilirubin, which is highly toxic, which is an unconjugated, we call it as unconjugated. Now this has to be detoxified. So that happens within the hepatocytes. So within the hepatocytes, once the bilirubin is taken inside, this is bound with one more protein molecule. So this protein molecule will bind to the bilirubin and keeps the bilirubin within the cell so that this bilirubin will not escape out of the cell and this protein molecule will help the bilirubin to enter the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is the endoplasmic reticulum organelle. So the bilirubin can enter the endoplasmic reticulum and within the endoplasmic reticulum the conjugation is happening. So this is the bilirubin within the endoplasmic reticulum of the liver cell. This is the liver cell hepatocyte and this bilirubin is conjugated with glucuronic acid. We call it as uridine diphosphate glucuronic acid by the enzyme glucuronyl transferase. So we will write it here, glucuronyl transferase. So this enzyme will cause binding of acid, glucuronic acid with bilirubin. So this bilirubin now is bound to glucuronic acid. So we call this as bilirubin monoglucuronide. bilirubin monoglucuronide and this conjugated bilirubin, bilirubin monoglucuronide can again be conjugated with the same UDP glucuronic acid to form this bilirubin which was having one glucuronic acid. Now we will have two glucuronic acid. So this is bilirubin 
डाइग्लुक्रोनाइड सो दिस अनकॉन्जुकेटेड बिलोरुबिन विल बी कॉन्जुकेटेड विथ यूडीपी ग्लुक्रोनिक एसिड टू फॉर्म बिलोरुबिन मोनोग्लुक्रोनाइड एंड बिलोरुबिन डाइग्लुक्रोनाइड दिस कॉन्जुगेशन इज कैटेलाइज बाय एंजाइम ग्लुक्रोनिल ट्रांसफरेज so once these conjugated bilirubins are formed within the hepatocytes they have to be actively transported out of the hepatocytes into the biliary canaliculi not into the circulation so this is the canalicular membrane this is the canalicular membrane of the hepatocyte and consider this is the bile canaliculi so at this membrane there is an active transporter active transporter here that will pick up this and actively transports the bilirubin glucuronides the conjugated bilirubin conjugated bilirubin is actively transported by this atp is transport protein so this is the एम आर पी टू प्रोटीन मल्टी ड्रग रेजिस्टेंस असोसिएटेड प्रोटीन टू सो दिस रिक्वायर्स एनर्जी सो वंस द बिलोरबिन इज कॉन्जुकेटेड विद इन द लिवर सेल्स दिस कॉन्जुकेटेड बिलोरबिन हैज टू बी एक्टिवली पम्प आउट ऑफ द लिवर सेल्स इन टू द बिलियरी कैनालिक लाइफ सो दिस इज हैपनिंग बाई एम आर पी टू प्रोटीन टू समराइज द रोल ऑफ लिवर सेल्स इन कॉन्जुकेशन द बिलोरबिन विच इज एंटरिंग द लिवर along with the albumin is picked up by the liver cells and within the liver cells this bilirubin is conjugated with glucuronic acid to form conjugated bilirubin or bilirubin monoglucuronide or bilirubin diglucuronide and this conjugated bilirubin has to be actively exported into the biliary canaliculi through the atpas transport protein and this conjugated bilirubin from the biliary canaliculi it enters into the bile ducts and from the bile ducts it reaches the small intestine so through the bile ducts it reaches the duodenum so this is all about the role of liver in conjugation of bilirubin the unconjugated highly toxic bilirubin converted into a conjugated monoglucuronide or conjugated bilirubin diglucuronides by the action of enzymes within the liver cells and now these conjugated bilirubin are water soluble and they are non toxic and they are excreted through bile into the small intestine this conjugated bilirubin from the duodenum it traverses all the way through the jejunum and ileum small intestine and at the terminal portion of ileum or in the colon the large intestine there occurs some metabolism or conversion of this conjugated bilirubin by the action of intestinal bacteria so in this portion of ileum terminal ileum so there are bacteria they are sitting here these will release some enzymes we can name them as glucuronidases glucuronidases will split the glucuronic acid from conjugated bilirubin so this conjugated bilirubin had two glucuronic acid so this glucuronidase enzyme from the intestinal bacteria will split this glucuronic acids to form unconjugated bilirubin this unconjugated bilirubin again further it is split it is broken down now it is degraded to form small colorless fragments small colorless fragments we call these as urobilinogens ubg urobilinogens are colorless fragments they are degraded products from the conjugated bilirubin by the action of intestinal bacterial enzyme glucuronidase so this happens in terminal part of small intestine ileum or in the large intestine now this ubg or urobilinogens they are formed this can be excreted 
this can be excreted. So, major portion of these urobilinogens will be excreted through the large intestine and through fecal content. So, through the fecal content, it is released major portion around 80 percent of urobilinogen formed. If this urobilinogen is let for long time in the fecal content, this urobilinogen is oxidized to give rise to stercobilin. Stercobilin will add color to the stool. The fecal content is colored because of the stercobilin and this stercobilin is oxidized product of urobilinogen. And remaining 20 percent of the urobilinogen, this 20 percent of the urobilinogen is picked up by the circulation back from the intestine. It is picked up by the circulation. It enters the blood vessels and it reaches back to the liver. This reaches back to the what? Liver. Yes. 20 percent of the urobilinogen, UBG is reaching back to the liver and most of the UBG is uptaken by the liver cell and some is released into the systemic circulation through the hepatic vein into the inferior vena cava. The urobilinogen that is reaching the heart from the inferior vena cava. So, this will be pumped into the systemic circulation, will reach the kidneys, the kidneys, urobilinogen will reach the kidneys and this will be excreted through urine. And within the urine, this urobilinogen is oxidized to form urobilin. The color of the urine, the color of the urine is because of this urobilin present in the urine and this urobilin is oxidized by the urobilinogen. To summarize, the conjugated bilirubin that is formed within the liver will enter the small intestine and from the small intestine it travels through the terminal part of the small intestine or in the large intestine. This conjugated bilirubin is broken down, degraded or catabolized by the glucuronidase enzyme. They are released from the intestinal bacteria and this conjugated bilirubin is converted to urobilinogens which are colorless and these urobilinogens most of them they are excreted into fecal content 80 percent are excreted into fecal content and the urobilinogen is oxidized to stercobilin and this gives the color to the fecal matter remaining 20 percent of the urobilinogens is returning back to the liver through the portal circulation and most of them are picked up by the liver cells and again they are released into the biliary canaliculi. This is the enterohepatic circulation. So, released back into the biliary canaliculi will reach the intestine and this circulates. Some amount of urobilinogen from the liver will not be picked up by the hepatocytes. That will bypass the uh, sinuses and will reach the systemic circulation and that is excreted through the kidneys. So, urobilinogen will be found in the urine and in the urine the urobilinogen is oxidized to form urobilin and this urobilin will give the color to the urine. This is all about how RBCs are broken down within the splenic macrophages and how macrophage will convert the hemoglobin into bilirubin and how this highly toxic bilirubin is handled by the liver cells that is conjugation of bilirubin within the liver cells and how this conjugated bilirubin is traversing through the intestine reaching the terminal part of the small intestine or the large intestine and it is getting converted into the colorless fragments urobilinogens by the action of intestinal bacterial flora and how these urobilinogens are excreted from the body. This mechanism is very important to understand the pathophysiology of jaundice where the bilirubin levels in the plasma and in the tissues will be increased either due to defect in any of these pathways. There can be either increased bilirubin formation, decreased bilirubin conjugation within the liver, decreased bilirubin excretion due to some obstructions that may result in increased blood bilirubin levels and this increased plasma bilirubin level will result in deposition of this bilirubin into various tissues. 
that will cause yellow discoloration of various tissues. The first sight is the sclera, the outer covering of the eyeball. Sclera, which is white in color, turns yellow. So when the bilirubin content is more than 2.5 or 3 milligram per deciliter, the first sign we notice is sclera, yellowish discoloration, we call it as icterus. I hope you understood the concept of how RBC is broken down, how bilirubin is formed, how this unconjugated bilirubin is converted to conjugated bilirubin and how this conjugated bilirubin is excreted through the bile and eliminated from the body. I have a question for you. Can you name the protein which is binding to the unconjugated bilirubin within the hepatocyte and holding this unconjugated bilirubin within the cell? and not letting it into the circulation and it permits this unconjugated bilirubin to enter into the endoplasmic reticulum for conjugation purpose. Name that protein in comment section. I will meet you again in the next lecture. Thank you for watching this video.